Hi! I'm Brittany. And I'm Brad. And we are Audio Shelf. Ooh, if you like what we're doing here, please click that red button to subscribe to our channel. You can tell that we changed up the script a little bit because of that ooh. ooh. So today we are very excited because we are always excited. We are going to be reviewing Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chabowski. Oh my Chab gosh. Chabowski. 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 Like Shotsky. Shotsky. Like Chabotsky. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so this book came out of nowhere for us. It really did. I had no idea how many pages it had. No, it's a lot. It's a 24 plus hour book. Mm -hmm. 24 and a half. 24 and a half? Hour book to be exact. Jesus, Mary and Joseph on the cross, which we're well, going to talk about a lot today. Yes. Oh, yes. The audiobook is narrated by Christine Lakin. Mm -hmm. Let's dive in. Let's go. Whew. It's creepy. This is genre as a genre that I had no idea about until Brad said it. And I was like, what is that genre? Religious horror. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, religious horror. It's creepy. It makes you think, especially if you're like, kind of like us and not really into the Bible. No, we are not thumpers. The only thumper I know is that from Alice in Wonderland. That's his name, Thumper, right? No. No, what movie is that from? Bambi. Bambi. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe this book? Like, what is the summary? Okay. People are probably asking us. Yes. So we were trying to practice this before the video began. But as always, it's just a runaway train this book at was, a certain point. It was wild. It was crazy. So it's about this little boy named Christopher, who him and his mom, Kate, are escaping from an abusive situation back in West Virginia or something? Mm. Or Stupid Missouri? Jerry. Yeah. I think West Virginia, probably. Probably. They go to Pennsylvania for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> they stop there. Like, that's the place that Kate is like, oh, okay, this looks like a quiet little town. Looks safe. Looks easy. I'm going to get a job here. We're going to make our life here. We're going to mm -hmm. be safe here. Mm -hmm. And so that is kind of where the story begins. From there, we have Christopher in school getting bullied. Being we, dyslexic. Yes, and just all around the kids like picking on him. We meet some of the other townspeople. A lot of things happen. Then the weird stuff starts hmm. with this like imaginary world and the, these plastic bags and clouds with faces in them. Clouds with faces. And ice cream trucks that play the scariest music you have ever mm. heard in your life. It really starts off to me feeling like It. Yes. It's oh, like, yes. It's like It versus Goonies or something like that. Yes. It was giving me that kind of vibe. Stranger Things. Stranger Things. It and Stranger Things. It and, and Stranger Goonies. Things. Yes. Like, it just... Ugh. It went crazy, really. I mean, it's a 24-hour book. 24 so it didn't, hours. It didn't get to the crazy very quickly. But... It did feel very fast. Mm -hmm. So we think that Christopher gets kidnapped, essentially. Yes. And then you find out he didn't get kidnapped because he got lost in the woods. Mm -hmm. But what happened to him in the woods? Yeah. That's where the story starts to, to go. Yes. And one thing to keep in mind that Christopher and his group of friends, because he does have a little small group of friends that are like other kids who get bullied too. Mm -hmm. But Christopher and his group of friends are seven years old. Seven. Which, let's be real, let's get into the the, the cons here of the, of the novel. Yes. I do not believe these kids were seven years old. Four years ago, they were wearing diapers. Mm-hmm. And at seven years old now, they're wielding guns. Yes. The characters were not talking as if they were seven years old. No. They were not acting. They were not no. thinking. They were thinking of, their little prefrontal cortex were like going as a 14, 13, maybe even a 17-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. They were blasted on all cylinders, and they should not have been. No. They should have been finger painting still mm -hmm. and learning their math. Common core these days. Common core. And have the parents be frustrated because they don't know it either. Exactly. But instead, these kids were like hyper smart, and I don't think they were supposed to be hyper smart. Christopher did have uh, dyslexia, but then it went away, and there was another kid in there who had special needs as mm. well. Um, he was one of the friend group kids. And then suddenly that went away yeah. and they just became so intellectual mm -hmm. that it was almost very unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And the parents never asked a question. Never. They're like, ooh, my kid's getting A's. Yeah. 
Like so, so another thing about this novel is there were so many genres that it started off being. Yeah. There was romance between the sheriff and Kate. There was oh my god, I love I love Sheriff and Kate shipping them forever. I don't remember what his name is, so his name is Sheriff. No, I think his name is Sheriff. The entire yes. book they were saying Sheriff, the Sheriff, the Sheriff. Yes. Mr. Sheriff. Sheriff. Yes, Kate and Mr. Sheriff. She would be Kate Sheriff. Kate Sheriff. But Done. anyway, we love them. There was also some fantasy elements to it. Yeah. There was just some of the hissing lady versus the nice man who mm -hmm. are essentially good versus evil in this book. And Christopher's kind of torn between the two in yes. this imaginary world. Yes. So there are some fantasy elements to it. There was, obviously, you mentioned the religious horror. It kind of cultivated to be this this new genre that we've never heard of. No. Or even wanted to read about because we're not really religious people. Mm. And, you know, we have our beliefs. However, religion, the Bible, we have questions. And that's okay. That's okay. Anyway, this book gets bonkers and it is just, oh my God, a mm. ride. A ride that, like, sometimes you're like, I don't know if I should be on this ride. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand what's happening on this ride. I don't, I think it was a mistake for me to enter this ride. Mm. But then as it continues on, you're like, okay. Did you say steak? I'm very hungry right now. Me too. This is a problem. Mm. They do have steak in this. They do. They have good steak. Where's Chris? Because one of the things that happens... Basically, Christopher becomes this good luck charm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. after he goes into the woods and comes out. And Mama Kate gets set up with this big house and all this money and all this food to spoil Chris. Oh, it's so good. It was really good. It was one of those like happy endings from at the beginning. So you kind of got to see their struggle for a little bit. And then you got to see their success for a little bit mm -hmm. as well until all of the nutso part started which it was really, really interesting. You start getting the religious vibes very early on when mm -hmm. you meet Mary Catherine, who is a Catholic um, girl who is very, very mm -hmm. into her religion and pleasing God and confessing her sins and to think it is to do it was her like motto basically. Yeah. yeah. So we get to know her a little bit and she is really where the religious aspect of it starts and it goes dark, I would say, like, right after her part. Oh, like, most finishes. definitely. Most definitely. And we pop back and forth between her and some of the other characters. There's many different voices, which is why I want to focus a little bit more on Christine for a second. Mm. Because her work in this novel, this audiobook, was fantastic. Seriously, Christine can read 24 hours of a book and not feel like she's tired, mm. not seem like her voice is run down. You do not hear the production flips or anything like when she took a mm -hmm. break. It is just smooth and controlled and her male character voices, her female character voices, her hissing lady, oh, her nice God. man, the Am spooky. So there is this Ugh. character, there is this character named Ambrose who is this older man I love him. and Christine's voice for Ambrose puts me in a nursing home. Yes. It literally puts me into a nursing home. She is phenomenal. She is an amazing narrator. This book, I don't think I would be able to pick it up physically and mm -mm. read it and nope. enjoy it. Nope. Like, first of all, it is very, very big. It's 700 plus pages. That's a no from me. That's like the Bible. Right. Ugh. But there's no there's no like highlighted in red when Jesus comes. Correct. To make it a little bit spicy. Yes. Another thing about Christine, I have never been so scared listening oh. to an audiobook. Yes. I don't I have not, I'll be honest, I have not listened to it. I haven't listened to many Stephen King books. I haven't read many Stephen King books, but I imagine them being scary mm -hmm. and being dark. Mm -hmm. But when I listened to Imaginary Friend, I was on the edge of my seat, covered up with covers, scared to go outside to walk the dog. It was so horrific yes. and scary and terrifying, especially her hissing lady voice. Oh my God. And she yeah. was like, <laughs> yeah. And just <laughs> figuring out like who these people are in relation to the story, because they are people yeah. that you don't meet in the story at all. They're not characters. It's not a mystery driven book mm -hmm. at all. There's a little bit of like 
who could this be? What would this person be? Mm -hmm. Is that person good? Is that person bad? There's all these questions, but it's never something that you're like, I'm going to solve this mystery because mm -hmm. there's not really a mystery there. It is yeah. just watching the story of this town evolve and how they change and how they find their peace mm -hmm. eventually. I like what you said about questions. You're always yeah. asking questions throughout this novel. And I think if you take this novel and kind of really study it and come up with the, the reason why Steven wrote such a unique and different book, you really start to think, wow, he really had religion in mind. Because yeah. there's so many questions that we have about religion. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and if you know all the questions and answers, good for you. But a lot of people in life have many different types of questions. And when you're reading Imagining Friend, you're asking these questions. You're saying, is this person who I think it is? And do I, should I root for this person? Is this person good? Is, it per is this person bad? So I really think the comparison between what society, how society views religion and the intention that Stephen had behind this work, it's very similar and, and can be compared. I feel like you just returned from the woods and are now like changed. I did see a couple bags out there. Because that was high level. Really? I did get confused by what you were saying, but not in a bad way. Oh, good. Good. It was the good, smart way. Okay, good. I good, was good, like, good. wow, this man is really... <laughs> he is professoring to me right now. This man? This man. <laughs> <laughs> haven't been called that in a while. <laughs> if you're somebody who takes your religion very seriously and you are passionate about your religion and you go to church every Sunday, this book would be something that I think you would enjoy. Mm -hmm. I think it would be something that you would see yourself in at certain points because we all have questions like Brad was saying and you can also understand those questions as well if you are somebody who is compassionate to other people as well. If you are a person who does not enjoy religion as much as that previous person, you have a lot of questions, a lot, a lot of questions, and you haven't gotten the answers that you want, this book isn't really going to be filled with answers, but I think it's still a book that you would enjoy because it does have that believer and non-believer, and you mm -hmm. do get that comparison throughout it. And I really cannot tell from the end if Steven is someone who is a religious person or if he is someone who is a non-religious mm -hmm. person. Because the way this book wraps up is so unique mm -hmm. and so different. And it's like power to women almost. Yeah. That I really enjoyed. And I never thought that I would think that I would enjoy such a religious reading. Where there is a lot of Christ. There yes. is a lot of God. There is a lot of like Mary. Um, just a, a lot of biblical references. Mm -hmm. And I, I like what you said. I think that this book is so eloquently written mm -hmm. that you don't feel pressured to believe one way or the other. Yes. And nothing is forced down your throat. Yes. And you really can make a decision for yourself what you're going to take out of the novel. Mm -hmm. That's a better way of saying what I was trying to say. I feel like I was very confusing in it. Well, but I'm glad that you're here. It's the damn woods. It's the damn woods. The damn woods. I need to wander into some woods mm. and come back out changed and enlightened. You were too busy in winter wood. I was. I was in a different kind of wood. Hey, Shay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, I do want to talk about some negatives. Okay. So I felt like the book towards the end got a little jumbled for me. Mm-hmm. Like you said earlier, there's a lot of questions, a lot of confusion, and you were, you were really thinking that, hey, I might not be grasping this material well enough. It does wrap up nicely in the end, and I think that you do truly grasp the, the message, but it did take a while to get there. Yes. So I feel like the book could have been a little shorter, 700 pages plus, it's, that's too much. Yes. What you doing? It's like, what do would it take you, 20 years <sighs> to, to write a book? It had to have. Probably. 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 Yeah, probably. Because Stephen wrote Perks of Being a Wallflower mm -hmm. about 20 years ago. Yeah. And this was his second book that kind of not a follow-up because there's no way, shape, or form anything like Perks. Mm-mm. Completely different genre. So different. But this was his his second book in 20 years. Yeah. Which is surprising because you'd think authors would write books here and there. He might have been working on something else. We don't know because it's not published yet. I mean, Stephen King has got a new work out every single six months. Stephen King has only about 50 plus books. 
Did you just say only? But I, I know only, but you think that he would have like millions. How many books do you have? Zero. How many books do I have? Zero. But Stephen, Stephen King has King. 50 books? It's Stephen King. Nora Roberts has like 100. Well, that's because we know why that's because. That's true. So I would say that we are definitely going to shelf this book. Completely. This is one of the longest books that I have listened to. Mm -hmm. You did Hamilton, which is how long? It was about like 700, 800 pages. So about 24 hours mm -hmm. as well. Yep, 25 I think, yep. Okay. This is one of the longest books that I have listened to mm -hmm. and I am going to shelf it. I cannot say that I will listen to it again. No. But I probably will listen to parts and I will recommend it to a lot of people. Oh, this book is going to be recommended several times. Yes. And it's also a nominee yeah. for the Goodreads awards yeah which so is awesome if you haven't voted on those goodreads make sure you vote yes and i would definitely have to say i recommend the audiobook if you're somebody who can't do audiobooks the physical book may be a little bit difficult for you because it does have some negatives from other reviewers mm -hmm. that we have seen and read but i would say if you are somebody who can sit down with an audiobook and really enjoy an hour or so at a time you'll be able to get this book done in about a, a week and a half, two yeah. weeks, because you always end up listening to a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I listened at the gym and I finished the 24 hours in about a week and a half yeah, at 1.5 speed. I was going to say I did 1.25. Yeah. And that was perfect. Yep. Yeah. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. So definitely pick up the audiobook. Definitely enjoy Christine's narration. What Steven has written here and what she delivers is amazing. So good. It's the second coming. Ooh, gospel. The only question that I have at the end of this, I know I said that there wouldn't be many mysteries, but was that the end? If you think that you know what we're talking about, leave a comment. Before we end, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Mm -hmm. It's a big red button down below. Please hit it. Yes. We need more subscribers. Yes, 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 yes. And also follow along with us on our various social medias. We are on Twitter at Audio Shelf Me, Instagram at Audio Shelf Me, and Facebook at Audio Shelf. And if you want to be involved in our Patreon community, please sign up. Please. The information is down below as well. It's right there for you. You just gotta click it. So until next time. Bye. bye.